Welcome back, Acron fans. Never mind. Try that again. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time between God and Saktoth. Gonna be on Red Comet again. They played a lot of matches on Red Comet. My last week's cast was primarily Red Comet Saktoth God games. Let us begin. Also, by my previous comment, I imagine some of you may be Akron fans, but you're watching this for Zero K. All of you are Akron fans, that's kind of cool. Please watch those casts too. Anyway, Google Frog is not in this game. God is starting out with Amphibious Operations Plan. I was a bit confused because Google Frog did go for Amphibious Operations Plan in our first game on Finn's Revenge, which made a lot more sense on that map, being that that map had a lot of water to work with, while Sackdoth going for Hovercrafts once again. Actually, that makes a bit more sense because Hovercrafts are still fast. They're still fast units, they're still quite powerful. God is actually very powerful. His, the other games we were playing, or he was playing with Sackdoth that I was commentating last week, primarily was Scrubbers versus Light Vehicles. Not Hovercrafts versus Light Vehicles, Scrubbers versus Light Vehicles. Specifically, just these guys. Because Scrubbers are frightening. Scrubbers deal a lot of alpha damage. I think it's 100 damage, 110 damage. They have three second reload time, 110 damage. If you have four or five of them, they'll one-shot almost anything your opponent can fill at that stage in the game. It's just terrifying. But amphibious bots are also similarly high alpha, though archers not so much. Ducks definitely. Ducks, I believe, deal about 400 damage a shot. At least with both of their missiles at once. And archers, on the other hand, nowhere near as much, nowhere near as much damage. 13 damage a second. Their primary strength is pushing things away, but against hovercrafts, that actually works fairly well. At least as far as getting them out of the way goes. Anyway, Sackdoth coming in for harassment. Only one scrubber, surprisingly. Nor with God, he would normally go for four or five scrubbers for harassing. And that's kind of why. Scrubbers, once they need to reload, don't have a whole lot of hope. And this game, however, does seem a little bit silly. Just because we are seeing amphibious. The amphibious units are not units you see a whole lot. They are... You just don't see them. People don't build amphibious units much, especially in 1v1. Especially on maps that don't have a lot of water. Rapids is a map which has a big river through the center. That's a common map for amphibious bots. But otherwise, you don't see them very much. You and we do have, well, at least a demonstration of what the archer does well. Pushing this halberd away, keeping it from really doing anything, but the halberd, being that it's not attacking, is in shield mode. It's hardly taking any damage at all. I mean, the archers already have pretty low damage, and at this point, it's not helping. Both players basically in incapable of damaging the other too much. Backed off, looks like he's just trying to scout out with that halberd, maybe seeing if he can't hit some stuff, but it's... But it is going to be kind of small for damage. And the archer doing what it can against the laser tower, it looks like both... Well, it was about even, but with the repair, thanks to that quill doing repair, it really didn't matter. And more archers from God. Really, God looks like he's probably just trying to see what he can get away with with just archers. Pure archer spam. What can I do with pure archer spam? And the answer is... Actually, apparently quite a bit. At least when your opponent's going for hovercrafts and not focusing on anything other than halberds. Maybe the players just agreed to go halberd versus archer and see how that worked out. Interesting test. Trying to push the halberd off the map and it's not going to work. There's no off the map to push it onto. Though it is worth noting that you can actually push units off of cliffs, and I think they will take damage when they hit the ground. It's a rare thing, you don't see it very often, very few units have the ability to push other units around. But I'm pretty sure that is how it works. Anyway, Sackdoth is able to scout out, he is actually getting his halberd out of defense mode, and it is going to go down, primarily to the boy, which actually does deal a decent amount of damage, 150 per shot. That is closer to the standard high alpha for... Oh, nice use of Halberd there. He did... He tanked the damage from the Defender while it was in defense mode and was able to get rid of the Defender basically for free. Laser Turrets not so much, but Halberd's basically hard counter Defenders that way. However, God coming in... Oh, if he were had the Archers around... If he had the Archers going around this side here and the Boy over here, then that would have been beautiful. Just pushing the Halberds right into the Boy. But it looks like that's not what's going to happen. The Archers instead are just going to deal direct damage to the, the Halberd. And it's not really affecting it too much other than, you know, damage. But not really affecting it too The pushing isn't really affecting it too much. Halberds apparently are pretty heavy units. No matter, though, the buoy able to take that out. And Sackdoth continue to expand along the north side of the map. Goof, er, God expanding towards the south side of the map. 
And Sackdoth is... Well, he's actually ahead in economy. He's about one and a half times as powerful an economy as God has, both power and metal. The harassment Sackdoth's been doing has been fairly effective. Slow, but effective. God has done no harassment in the meantime. He's just had his archers on defense this entire time, so Sackdoth's actually slowly taking map control, despite the fact that he's not using the most powerful units that you could possibly use. Halberds still are very powerful at base breaking and just getting through things. Granted, against the buoys, it's kind of hopeless, but I mean, between the slow and just the fact that they're higher damage, it's really hard to get through. But at the very least, he's keeping God in his base, keeping him on the back foot. The so Sackdoth doing a nice job just gaining map control that way, slowly but surely, while God, on the other hand, he is expanding towards the south, but he is kind of leaving himself open, and his main base at the back, he is actually losing, there he goes, losing that metal extractor, it was close, I wasn't sure if it was going to work out that way, but it did. And more archers pushing away Sackdoth's forces, the Halberd's definitely having a silly hard time getting through that. The angle is a bit worse than it was before, but still... That's archers. I, I really think God was kind of being silly and just seeing what he could do with archers, which actually, it turns out, isn't that much. It's no okay off, but it's not fairly much, especially against halberds. Oh, nice use of halberds here. Laser turret attack in one halberd in defense mode, while the, another halberd just tears to shreds. Unfortunately for him, a buoy is kind of spoiling that, and a duck as well. Oh, okay, apparently... Must be a different version where ducks did not have homing weapons. I know ducks have been kind of flipping back and forth between homing missiles and torpedoes. And mostly the ducks in this version have torpedoes, not homing weapons. So considerably less powerful than they were in the game we saw with Google Flog and Cube. I believe this is a less recent version of that one, though. I could be wrong, but I do believe that. Yeah, this other less recent version is one. This is 1.1.9.8, and the one Google Frog Cube was 1.1.9.11, which means that the ducks have been switched around very frequently. I think in the latest version they are using homing missiles, and Sackdoth's commander being attacked directly by the archers, not doing a whole lot of damage though. Like I said, the archers really don't have a whole lot of damage. Their point is support and pushing things into place, and that's not helping. Anyway, Sackdoth is getting scalpels, which do definitely have homing missile weapons. Not especially long-range homing missile Actually, no, they are fairly long-range homing missile weapons. About the same as Boy. Actually, exactly the same as Boy, so they're going to be useful for countering that. Against Ducks, however, they're just going to outright... Or, sorry, an archer. But against Ducks, they're going to outright win. The ducks can move into position somewhat, but it's just not going to work. The only reason that they have a chance is because the scalpels are targeting God's commander and are about to destroy it. No, they are not. That duck able to finish it off in time, but the halberds should do the trick. There we go. The halberds finishing it off. So God, half his economy, he has his commander had E cell. So that's six energy down. He's actually he's got a major energy deficit now. As a result of that, his energy was carried with his metal, but now it's dropped below. And he's going for a looks like a last ditch attack, which might have a chance. The boys here are his best bet. They are taking out his commander. They will be able to take out this expansion area here. But they might be able to. They have a lot of health, though. I think they can tank this damage. They can tank the laser, but the halberds are going to change this up. The commander going down. Sagtoth needs to send around... Probably send around some stuff to the north. Or to send a counterattack force. Probably these halberds will be fine on their own. No, halberds with scalpels will be fine. But a counterattack force... Get as little as you need on defense. Just go for a counterattack. There's very little defense along this side here. And the main base, there's hardly any. So, God basically has lost this game... Sackdoth needs to take advantage of... There he is, actually, I was about to say, he needs to get another factory, and that's exactly what he's doing. More importantly, he has a caretaker on the hovercraft factory, making sure that is building up quickly. I think at this point, actually, getting more hovercrafts would be a better idea with the caretaker. Getting the factory is good, but the caretaker should be supporting the hovercraft factory completely. This gunship plant won't likely be up in time, and once it is, though, it's going to be great, because there's hardly any defenses anti-air that God has, though really, God's defenses are basically being completely torn apart by the halberds. He doesn't even need gunships at this point. He basically has what he needs. The only main advantage to gunships would be that the ducks would have no chance. Unlike with homing missiles, where they have some chance against air, with the torpedoes, the gunships are just dodged. They dodge everything. They don't fire fast enough. They don't move fast enough. Oh, and interestingly, one of the... Someone in the chat is pointing out... Or earlier in the chat pointing out, why is God not making low walls? Very good point. God could be terraforming some choke points for himself, because hovercrafts have a terrible time with any non-flat maps. That's one of the reasons Red Comet 
is so powerful for Hyper Trust is that it's flat. It is flat. Completely flat. So, except for some creatures around here, which Hyper Trust can avoid. But yeah, it's a good question. Why is God not making low walls around the map and just using the fact that his hovercrafts... Hovercrafts are not able to get through that and the previous boss definitely can. I think on this map, though, he couldn't go for water. Just still, the terrain elevation difference would definitely hold Sackdoth back. However, the one problem with that is it would cede a lot of map control to Sackdoth. Paraform is not cheap. And although it would definitely allow him to stop the hovercrafts from getting in, it wouldn't stop the gunships from getting in. At this point, it's just too late. That might have been useful maybe 10 minutes ago. No, 10 minutes ago is starting in. Might have been useful 5 minutes ago. But at this point, it's probably not worth it. So I think God is just going to throw in the towel now. Oh, actually, Sprang pointing out that 25 high walls is high enough to stop. Hovercrafts are not, are not that expensive. However, my point was more... He'd have to go forward and build them at certain points, because wherever he builds those walls, he has control over that section and that section only. Which means he's kind of ceding map control over the rest of the map, unless he goes over the walls and he has to rebuild the walls, and that just slows things down. It doesn't matter, however, that's a moot point. Sackdog has taken this game completely, taken out of the factory, and will be winning from here. But yeah, that is a point, like, at the 4 or 5 minute mark, that could have helped. But it looks like that might have been just a test. They In the chat, looks like they were talking about various strategies to use. They probably were just testing how well Amphibious versus Hover works on a non-water map. Maybe just in general, how well Amphibious works on a non-water map. And it turns out it's kind of tricky. Probably not very. The whole idea of having it, the terraforming, that might have helped. That's actually a very common strategy for spiders. Not so much for bots, but definitely for spiders. You see that a lot. Because spiders can really take advantage of that. However, it's still something that requires a fair amount of investment, a fair amount of... It's a slow push strategy. It can be useful, and if you're focusing heavily on it, it could be. And on Red Comet, there are enough choke points that you probably wouldn't have to terraform too much. But that's that's what happened. So I guess that was a bit of a silly game between the two of them, not the most serious game between them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and that is going to be it for me tonight. So I thank you for watching, and have a good night, everybody.